Building a website in 2023 is incredibly smart. Whether it's for personal use or for the growth of your business, the importance of setting up an online presence cannot be overstated. I'm Luke, your friendly web creator, and for over a decade, I've been designing WordPress websites and guiding thousands just like you through this process. Today, I've got a real treat for you. My step-by-step -step guide on how to build a WordPress site without using code. Yes, you heard me right. By the end of this video, you'll transform from a website newbie into a savvy webmaster armed with the knowledge to craft your very own website. So what do you say? Let's turn that dream of yours into a reality together. A fair warning, we're about to go into a pretty in-depth rabbit hole, which might take us about an hour. But if you're in a hurry, don't fret. You can always check out my condensed guide here. Still here? Great. But before we dive in, let's talk about some of the basic stuff. You might be wondering, why WordPress and how much does it cost? Let's break it down. Even with multiple website building platforms like Wix, Squarespace and Webflow around in 2023, WordPress still stands out head and shoulders above the rest. It's professional, reliable and favored by many. It's not just me who thinks highly of WordPress. A staggering 43% of all websites globally run on this platform. It's a website creation powerhouse. You're in good company. And you're never alone. There are thriving WordPress communities across social networks worldwide, always ready to lend a hand with any challenge. Plus, you'll find a pool of WordPress freelancers on platforms like Upwork and Fiverr, available to help you with any tricky spots. With thousands of plugins and ready-made designs on offer, WordPress helps you create attractive, functional sites efficiently and economically. Over the years, I've built hundreds of websites and WordPress has been my go-to platform for all types, from personal portfolios to intricate content sites. Among web creators, developers and designers, WordPress is the top choice, mainly for the control it offers. This flexibility sets WordPress apart from other platforms. As an open source solution, WordPress ensures you maintain the ownership of your content. You can move your site and your content to another host whenever you want. It also lets you manage features, design, and even modify the source code as you please. In short, WordPress is a platform that you can shape to perfectly fit your needs. So that's the why of choosing WordPress. Now onto the cost. If you're new to this, you might be asking, isn't WordPress supposed to be free? Well, yes and no. While the WordPress CMS itself is indeed free and open source, there are associated costs when setting up a WordPress site. You'll need to factor in expenses like domain name, hosting services, themes, a website builder, plugins, and so on. The cost can also vary greatly depending on your specific needs. Are you setting up a personal blog or a large e-commerce site? Do you require special features, custom designs, or high levels of traffic management? All these can influence your overall investment. Plus, if you need to hire a professional, you'll need to consider their time spent on building your website, which is an additional cost. Essentially, the sky's the limit on how much you can invest in a website. But here's the good news. In this guide, I'll teach you how to build a WordPress site for less than $200 a year. Now that's some serious bang for your buck. You'll also be building a functional, professional looking website without breaking the bank. This adaptability and cost efficiency is part of the beauty of WordPress. So stay tuned for some serious value for money. Let's demystify what goes into a WordPress website. Domain name, think of it as your online address. Hosting, where your website files are stored. WordPress CMS, the tool that helps you manage your content. Theme, the visual backbone of your website. Website builder, your construction kit, for building and editing your site. Plugins, the special features to enhance your website. Back in the day, you had to buy these components from several vendors, pay for each one separately, install the component independently, and resolve any incompatibilities or complications yourself. Sounds complicated, right? Well, not anymore. We're in 2023 and we've got Elementor. Picture Elementor as your all-in-one website creation toolbox packed with everything you need for a modern professional WordPress site. No more juggling between different vendors and wrestling with incompatibility issues. Here's what you'll get with Elementor. Elementor hosting, 
a pre-configured hosting plan made to cater to your specific website needs. Hello Elementor, a lean, lightning fast theme to give your website a solid foundation. Elementor Website Builder, a user-friendly drag and drop tool to help you build and customize your site. Elementor Library, hundreds of pre-made templates and designs to kickstart your website creation. Elementor AI, a smart assistant to help you with writing content, coding, and image generation. Before we proceed, let's dissect each component Elementor brings to your website. This will help you rest assured knowing that you're making the right choice. Elementor Hosting serves as a solid foundation, offering a hosting plan custom made for your website's needs. It's pre-equipped with the WordPress CMS, promising a stable, secure, and speedy website. The basic package accommodates for an average business website, featuring 10 gigabytes of storage and traffic volume up to 30 gigabytes. Ideal for about 25,000 monthly visitors. With a 99% server uptime guarantee, automatic WordPress updates, integrated SSL security, to a caching system and backup options, Elementor Hosting caters to all the technical aspects so you can focus on your creative journey. What sets Elementor apart from typical hosting companies is the comprehensive solution it offers. Your WordPress website comes with a design kit, the Hello Elementor theme, and the Elementor Pro Website Builder plugin, all set up and ready to roll. Hello Elementor is a WordPress theme engineered specifically for Elementor-based websites. It's lean and efficient, free from unnecessary code, and loads within the blink of an eye, thanks to its minimal nine kilobyte weight. Hello Elementor is trusted by over 3 million users and is the best WordPress theme to build upon. At the heart of Elementor is the Elementor Website Builder. This easy to use drag and drop editor allows you to sculpt every part of your website without needing to know how to code. Adopted by over 13 million websites globally, it constantly evolves with new features each month, bringing versatile capabilities to your fingertips. To ease your creative process, Elementor brings the Elementor Library, a treasure trove of ready to use templates and designs. From full websites, landing pages, to specific blocks and pop-ups, you're only a few clicks away from your perfect design. Lastly, Elementor AI. This AI assistant helps you generate engaging content, provides coding snippets for customization, and generates images and graphic elements for your site. It's an invaluable tool that simplifies the process, especially for beginners, ensuring you can focus on bringing your vision to life with fewer technical hurdles. All of this for just $120 a year, it's a deal that's tough to beat. Elementor places all the necessary tools for a successful WordPress website at your disposal. With Elementor, you're not just building a website, you're embarking on a smooth and enjoyable creative journey. That's enough preamble for now. So, are you ready to embark on this exciting WordPress journey with me? Then grab a cup of coffee, take a deep breath, and let's dive right in. Together, we're about to create something truly amazing. Remember, if you have any questions along the way, don't be shy, drop a comment below and I'll do my best to help you out. We're in this together. To get started, the first thing we need to do is go to the Elementor website at elementor.com and click on the Get Started button to begin. On the next page, we'll see a variety of pre-designed templates or kits that we can use as a starting point for our website. Take a moment to scroll through the kits and see which one best suits your needs. You can preview the kit before applying it to get a closer look at the design. You can also see what makes up the kit. This Fashionista blog, for example, comes with a home page, an about page, and other templates that fits a content creator. Once you've found a design that's right for you, Go ahead and click on the Start with this design button to begin customizing your website. Before you start using Elementor, you'll need to confirm your plan and create an account. We'll go ahead and skip forward a little bit using the magic of video editing. Having finished creating your account, you're ready to begin building your WordPress website. This is so exciting. Start by giving your website a name. I'll use Gabriel Cooks because that's the handle on his social media, but you choose whatever you want. You can change it at any time if you're still not sure. After entering a website name, click Next to continue. 
Now, wait a while while the kit loads, which may take a few seconds or up to a few minutes depending on your internet connection. Now that you've created your account and chose the right plan, it's important to get familiar with your account dashboard. After all, this is where you'll do things like connecting your domain name and removing the site lock to release your website to the World Wide Web. Firstly, here is my website that I just created. Any additional websites will appear here in this section. On the left here is my navigation to access the main areas of my account. Here on the top right is my avatar, and here you can view and edit my profile information. Back to the website. If I hover over my website, you'll see several options. The first one will have you jumping in and editing your homepage using Elementor right away. And the second one will take you to the WordPress dashboard. I'll select Manage this website, and let's check this out together. This is the website management screen, and here you can connect your custom domain name and enable email authentication before you launch a website. Next, you'll find the site lock option, and as long as it's on, your website will be hidden from the outer world. But if you want to show your progress or get an opinion from your trusted friend, you can share this pin with them so they can privately view it. Down here, you'll see your website backups. Elementor Hosting takes automatic backups for you, which is very handy if you ask me. If you want to, you can still create a manual backup before you make any changes to your website. Finally, you'll see the debugging and troubleshooting options in case you need further investigation or if something isn't clear. Now, it's time to choose a website kit to start with. Start by hovering your mouse over categories and clicking it. From here, Hover over Search and choose the category you're interested in. For this website, we'll choose the Blog category. Next, hover over Fashion Blog Website Kit and click What's Inside to take a closer look at the kit. Scroll down to see all the pages and elements that are included. If you like what you see, click Start with this kit to begin. Wait a little while the kit loads, which may take a few seconds or up to a minute depending on your internet connection. Once ready, click Let's Go to begin customizing your new website. This will take you straight into the Elementor editor, where you can start adding your own content and customizing the design to suit your brand, which we'll see how to do in a bit. Okay then, you're now on your way to creating a stunning WordPress website. But first, let's learn some of the WordPress basics. To do that, let's exit the Elementor editor and go to the WordPress dashboard. We can do that using the hamburger menu and clicking Exit. When exiting the Elementor Editor or logging into your website again, you'll be greeted with this dashboard. The WordPress dashboard is like the control center of your website where you can manage all aspects of your site from creating and editing content to customizing the design. Starting from the top, we have the admin toolbar, which gives us quick access to different actions and tools. This handy toolbar is at your disposal on each and every page of your website, but it can only be seen by logged in users. Let's take a closer look at each one of the options. From the left, we have this WordPress icon. By clicking on it, it'll take us straight into the WordPress dashboard. And we can always preview our website by clicking the name of the website here. Right next to it, we can see if we have any updates available. We can also view new comments and have access to quick actions such as creating a new page, a new blog post, adding users, and more. We also have features based on the plugins we install. For example, Elementor adds this support option at the end of the admin toolbar. But we can also chat with support directly using this icon at the bottom right corner. Now, direct your attention to the left hand side of the dashboard. You'll see a vertical menu with various options. Let's go over some of the key features and what they do. The post section. Here you can create new blog posts, manage existing ones, and even schedule them to be published at a later date. It's where you'll spend a lot of time crafting engaging content for your audience. Don't worry, we'll go into more detail about this section later on in the course. Clicking here will take us to the media library and we can click here to add new media. Next, we have the pages section. Just like posts, pages allow you to create static content like an about page, contact page, or any other important information you want to share with your visitors. And over here, we have all the elemental settings and templates, 
where we can access save templates, pop-ups, or go to the theme builder. We'll discuss this in more detail shortly. Oh, and by the way, if at any point you want to change the kit you've chosen, you can do that using the kit library. In the appearance section, you can control the aspects of your website, such as setting up themes, customizing them, and editing the different menus. Under plugins, you'll find a wide range of extensions that can add new features and functionality to your website, from SEO optimization to contact forms and social media integrations. Plugins are like little power-ups that enhance your website in countless ways. For example, Elementor is a plugin, and one of my personal favorites, if we're being honest. Next, we have the user section. This is where you can manage user accounts on your website. And finally, we have tools and settings. Here you'll find various options to configure your website's general settings, permalink structure, and more. Welcome to the Elementor Editor, where all your wildest dreams come true. Assuming those dreams are web building related, that is. The editor is divided into three main sections, our content area on the right side, the editor panel on the left side, and the top bar. The top bar gives you access to different settings and features. On the left of the panel header, you have an Elementor icon, which also serves as the menu button. We can use this menu to access the Elementor theme builder, which is used to create site part templates. These templates append and override the current WordPress themes page hierarchy, layout settings, and CSS styles. Remember when I mentioned page builders simplify website design? Well, this is why. We'll delve deeper into the theme builder in more detail later in the video. In case we make any mistakes, it's good to know we can go back in time and fix them by going through our pages history found here. We can also use this to revert back to previous versions. Underneath the page history, you'll find user preferences and keyboard shortcuts. User preferences allow you to customize the Elementor interface, such as switching to dark mode and where to be directed once exiting the page. Speaking of exiting pages, we can use this menu whenever we want to go back to the WordPress dashboard. Now, we can't really build a website without elements, right? Add new elements or widgets by clicking the plus icon, which will open the widgets library. These are creative elements you can use to build your page, like headings, text editors, images, videos, and more. Next, we have the site settings. Site settings, as it sounds, allows you to globally define your site settings from one place. We'll circle back to them later on in the course. Once we have a few elements on our page, it can get a bit hectic, which is why we can use this icon to display an organized view of our page elements. As we used a kit, we already have the content set up and named. Pretty cool, huh? Next, you can use the explore button to access any recent changes you've worked on or alternatively, use the finder tools found at the right side of the top bar to find any specific pages. Moving on, the rest of the options along the top bar, we have these device icons. It's worth mentioning that over half of your website visitors, precisely 51%, will probably access your website using their mobile phones. Here we can view or edit our page in tablet and mobile views and see how our content will react in different sizes. Some widget settings will show these icons as well, suggesting that settings can be customized for every screen. View page to see the live website and exit to go back to your WordPress dashboard. We can preview our changes and when ready to take them live, just hit this publish button. Now we're ready for the main attraction, the Elementor editor. This is where all the magic happens. As you can see, our content area already displays the homepage from the kit we chose. This is where you can add and edit elements that form the layout and design for your page. The content area is made out of two elements. The first element is Flexbox containers, which as the name suggests, are flexible boxes that contain your page's content. Next up, widgets. These are elements that are used to actually build our web page. You have different types of widgets and some are more complex and useful than others, depending on what you need. You can identify a widget by their pink frame and icon in the top right corner. Clicking an existing widget or dragging in a new one will change our editor panel to show the widget's details and settings. The first tab is content, where we can add, edit, and define the widgets, well, content. 
These settings change based on the widget's nature and purpose. In this case, we clicked on a heading widget, so we can change the text, add a link, edit the HTML tag, and set the alignment. The second tab, Style, is where we can change the widget's style, such as colors or typography. The last tab, Advanced, is where the advanced settings can be found. In this tab, we can set the widget's margin and padding, add motion effects, mask, and more. Kits are pre-made templates containing these widgets with the appropriate style and settings. I know it seems like a lot right now, but trust me, it will all fall into place as we continue. Now that we're familiar with the Elementor editor, it's time to take our first proper steps towards customizing our website. And for that, we're going to use a bit of style. Global style, that is. In the editor panel, exit to the site settings. This is where you'll edit settings that will affect the whole website. Our next step is to change the global colors of the site here. You can also use font and color continuity across your website to reinforce your brand and help users remember it. Every Elementor website comes with four main global colors seen here. Since I already know the colors I want, I will go ahead and update the values. This kit is amazing, but it's too dark for my sake, or rather, Gabriel's sake. So let's begin by changing the background color first. When you change a color, its name might not make sense anymore, like this color, for example. You can edit the names by just clicking them with your cursor. Once you're done, click Update to save your changes. Regarding the global fonts, we'll be updating them progressively throughout the tutorial as we proceed with customizing the website. As you can see, the website changes drastically with just a few clicks. Having adjusted our website's colors, let's turn our attention to another global element, the header. Hovering over it, we can see this has a green frame instead of a pink one. Whenever we see this, it means this element is part of our theme builder or a saved custom template. Let's make a few changes by clicking Edit Header. Now you'll see the frame has changed to pink. This means we're working with these elements. Clicking on the settings icon shows we're actually working on the header. This header is pretty simple. It has one container with a logo and nav menu. Let's start by changing the logo. Click the logo widget and then click Change Site Logo. We can see this allows us to edit the website name and description as well as update the site logo and favicon. I'll use this opportunity to update the site description to Gabriel's catchphrase, let's get cooking, followed by uploading his logo and an icon for the website. We can adjust the width in the style tab. Let's set it to 250 pixels and remove the height. Remember when I mentioned that we could tweak certain options for responsive design? This icon indicates we can adjust the settings for different devices, which is exactly what I'm going to do for tablets and mobile devices. Once you're done, go back to the desktop view. All right, now let's move on to the nav menu. The navigation on Gabriel's website will guide visitors as they explore his content so it should be both attractive and branded. First, let's add a little bit of animation to the menu text. When someone hovers over the menu item, we want it to rotate just a little bit to catch their attention. We can do this by making sure the pointer is set to text and the animation is set to rotate. Now, let's change the text color using new global colors we set up earlier. We'll also want to change the typography for the menu links to better align with Gabriel's brand. Seeing as we haven't yet updated the typography, let's go ahead and do that now. As you can see, this kit uses a global font called Menu Links. Let's update it by clicking the gear icon and changing the typography values. I've gone with Start Leeches for this one, and 22 pixels seems about right. Now, let's take a look at how the menu looks on a tablet and mobile device before we hit Update. We want to make sure it looks great on any device, so we'll adjust the font size and spacing as needed. 
Once everything is ready, hit the update button and exit to the site settings. With the header looking great, it's time to move on to the footer. Let's start by clicking on Edit Footer. Right off the bat, you see that this footer is made up of a main container with two elements inside it, each containing different elements. Changing the text is always a good start, so let's click on the heading widget and change the text to something more engaging. How about let's get talking? That kind of hits his catchphrase and will sure start a conversation. Next, click on the heading below and change the text to something that reflects Gabriel's friendly personality. Now, let's change the email address to Gabriel's official email. Looking at the link settings, you'll notice a wrench icon. This means this is a dynamic data or action. In this case, contacting Gabriel via email. There's a lot of dynamic information we can use. For now, let's focus on entering Gabriel's correct email address. Next up, let's add some social media links for Gabriel's fans to connect with him. We'll click on the icon list widget and open up the Facebook tab. Once we're done with that, we can fix up the final piece of the puzzle, the credit line. Clicking the credit line, we can see it's a text editor widget using a dynamic tag. Click the wrench icon to show its settings. This is a dynamic tag showing the date and time, in this case, the current year. This means the year will update automatically, which will save time next year. Click advanced and update the appropriate text. And that's it for the footer text. Now that we've finished updating the footer text, it's time to introduce some style to it. It's crucial that the style aligns with Gabriel's brand. So let's get started by clicking the main heading and heading over to the style tab. Go to typography and click the gear icon to edit the font style. This footer uses three styles, which are the primary and secondary fonts, as well as related post title and footer social. Begin by styling the primary font and setting the style of your choosing. For Gabriel's site, I've chosen Start Litchies, which is a Google font. Whatever you choose, make sure it's consistent across all devices. Do the same for the secondary font. In this case, I went with Montserrat with a size of 26 pixels and change the width, line height, letter spacing, and word spacing. Again, making sure the style is consistent across different devices. You already know the drill, so I'll go ahead and update the post title and footer social fonts off screen. Once you're done, don't forget to update your changes and done. With our colors and fonts established, it's time to update the color on the icon list, as well as the hover color. Do the same with the container's background, as shown here. This looks pretty good, but it's a bit stale if you ask me. Let's add some of Gabriel's flair to it using a shape divider. Shape dividers are graphic shapes used to separate sections of a web page. They're great for adding visual interest to the layout. Click the container, then go to Style and open the Shape Divider tab. You have a bunch of cool options to choose from. Since I know what Gabriel likes, I've already chosen the wave brush. Set the width and height that fits your design and toggle flip on if you need to. Now this is cool and all, but a little too cramped. Fix it by going to the advanced tab and set the margin to 6% and the top padding to 3%. And finally, click update your changes. This header and footer will stay consistent through our site. Now that we've done this, we can start editing our homepage by clicking here. This is as far as we'll go for this one, but if you want to continue and build the homepage, click here and I'll see you on the other side.